Hello everyone, welcome to Shesh Educational Videos. In this video, I am explaining about functional units of a computer. So there are total 5 functional units. I am going to discuss those functional units in this video. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. To get the notification of my new videos, please click the bell icon. So let me begin the explanation of functional units of a computer. So a computer consists of totally five functionally independent main units. So the first unit is input unit, second unit is memory unit, and the third unit is arithmetic and logic unit, which can be also called as ALU, and fourth one is output, and the fifth one is control unit. So computer mainly consists of, right, total five main parts. Now I'm going to discuss each unit in detail. So the first one is input unit. So the input unit is mainly used to give the input to the computer. So the computer accepts the information. The input will be in the form of information. That information can be data or a program. Okay. The computer accepts the input in the form of a program and data. How you are going to give the input? By using an input device. So you are going to use an input device to give the input to the computer in the form of data or a program. So example of input device can be a keyboard or a mouse. For example, when you press a key in the keyboard, right, that particular key will be translated into corresponding binary code because you know that computer understands only binary language. That's why whenever you press a key, that key should be uh, converted into binary code. So ASCII codes, right? So every letters in the keyboard or every key in the keyboard have some ASCII values. I'm going to discuss those ASCII values in detail in the upcoming videos, right? So whenever the information is converted into binary code, that binary code should be passed to the processor. First, it can be stored in the memory, then it can be passed to the processor, or else it can be directly uh, passed to the processor. But uh, what we do means first we store that particular input in the memory, then we can pass that uh, information to the processor to process it. Okay, so input unit. So input unit is mainly used to give the input to the computer. Okay, so next is memory unit. So whatever the input you are going to give in the form of data or in the form of program that needs to be stored, right? So the data and the program is used, uh, sorry, stored in the memory unit. If I say memory, there are two classes of memory. One is primary memory and one is secondary memory. So one is primary memory is a fast memory or a primary storage. Okay, it's a fast memory. It operates at the electronic speed, right? So whatever the programs you are going to execute, that programs needs to be stored in the primary memory first. Right? It needs to be passed to the processor. So your programs will be stored in the memory, the especially primary memory, while they are being executed. Primary memory is a temporary memory. Okay? So whenever the execution of the program is gets uh, completed, the program will be deleted because it's a temporary memory. It's a fast memory, especially your RAM, random access memory is a fast memory, right? But it's not permanent. That memory is temporary. So to overcome that, we can go for secondary memory or secondary storage where your data is stored permanently. And also we can store large amount of data and many programs in the secondary memory. But in primary memory, we can't do that. Its space is very limited. But in secondary memory, uh, we can store as many data as we want. Example for secondary memory will be your uh, optical disk, CD-ROMs, pen drives. Pen drive is a different thing. It's a, it is an example of a flash drive. Uh, that is also example for a secondary memory. So your CDs, DVDs, we can use that to store the information. Okay. Whatever the memory we consider, whether it is a primary memory or secondary memory, that memory consists of a large number of semiconductor storage cells. Right? We can call them as flip-flops. 
which is capable of storing one bit of information. You know that, right? Bits and bytes. Bit is the smallest unit of information. So memory contains semiconductor storage cells to store your information. Right? The memory is organized. Always remember that the memory is organized so that the contents of one word can be stored or retrieved in one basic operation. Right? So uh, you know that bits, bytes, words. So the memory, the memory is organized in such a way that it can be retrieved whenever you want. You can retrieve your information whenever you want. Okay. Memory in which any location can be reached in a short and fixed amount of time. Okay. That memory can be called as random access memory. Okay. So mainly primary memory. Getting my point guys. In memory there are two types. Primary memory and secondary memory. Suppose if you have any doubts. Please post your doubts in the comment section. So this is the second part of the main second functional unit of the computer. First one is input, second one is memory, and the third one is ALU, that is arithmetic and logic unit. What it does? This unit is used for performing arithmetic and logic operations. Yes, you are you need a information, you will get it from the input. Once you need once the information is there, you need to store it in the memory according and then the in the that information needs to be processed right how it is processed means using arithmetic and logic unit so this can be uh, this can be used to perform arithmetic and logic operations right how you are going to do this arithmetic and logic operations means so any for example any arithmetic operation is initiated by bringing the required operand into the processor for example assume that you have to add two numbers like uh, 2 plus 3 the result result will be the 5 the result that 2 plus 3 needs to be processed right so here 2 and 3 are operands plus c is nothing but operator getting my point so to do that you need to move you have to bring the required operands in our example what are the operands 2 and 3 are the operands into the processors that means we are going to store our results in registers so your ALU what it does it will do the addition of 2 and 3 and it will produce the final result 2 plus 3 is equal to 5 so this is the task of the ALU it is going to do the processing example arithmetic or logical operations getting my point next fourth one is the output unit so first you will get the input next you will store that details next you are going to process it then you need to display your output you, are, you need to display your processor result right for that purpose you are going to use the output unit um, the best example for output unit will be monitor because whatever the result that is displayed after the processing that will be displayed in the monitor your result will be displayed in the monitor so output unit is nothing but that is a unit used to send processed result to the outside world example your monitor and also printer printer is also one of the output device you can see your output in the monitor or you can print your output using a printer that's why printer is also output device and the last one the fifth one is control unit so what it does this unit is mainly used to control the activities of the other units such as memory and diode device for example you need to pass your uh, information from input devices to the memory then memory to cpu that is alu from alu to output how your information is passed from one unit to another unit mainly because of control unit it takes care of transmission of right it takes care of transmission of your uh, contents from one unit to another unit it's taken care by control unit the unit is used for controlling the activities of other units getting my point guys this unit sends control signals obviously how it will communicate this unit is going to communicate with every unit by sending the control signals to other units okay 
for example if it can control means it can send a read signal or a write signal read means you can uh, what you can uh, fetch the contents you can read it write means you can make changes to your contents read means you can't make changes to your contents write means you can make changes to your contents so in this way uh, control unit take care of everything as the name says for example data transfers between processor and memory are also controlled by the control unit obviously the data transfer between your processor and memory will be taken care by the control unit especially it uses timing signals right because we, for example if you want to uh, pass the particular information after 2 seconds how will you know that after 2 seconds i have to send that information by using the timing signals so control unit uh, uses timing signals when that particular time uh, happens right you have to do your task according to instructions okay so timing signals are signals that determines when a given action is to take place yes right so when that uh, timing signal tells that right when to do some task when the action should take place based on that for example after 2 seconds i have to transfer my data so timing signal will be sent so after 2 seconds you can transfer your data getting my point so control unit will take care of all this so this is the simple diagram of this you can see here input and output unit is there uh, sorry uh, that is io i can call it as io unit right so in the intermediate uh, in the middle of input and uh, output unit and uh, alu unit there is a memory right so you can transfer your data from input to memory then memory to alu so control unit will control all these transfers from alu to memory or from memory to input in the same way uh, output unit to memory or me memory to alu so control unit will take care of all this data transfers so processor contains this control unit and alu right in between processor unit and io unit there is a memory unit so whatever the data transfer that should uh, that should take place between input unit and a processor or a output unit and a processor memory will play a intermediate unit role so everything needs to be transferred using a memory unit okay so if you want to process your input first you need to store your input in the memory then again it will be passed from memory to al unit it will be processed again it will be uh, sent to the memory from the processor from memory again it will be displayed in the output getting my point guys hope you understood the concept suppose if you have any doubts please post your doubts in the comment section okay thank you thank you for watching the video and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel your support means a lot and please like my video and please share the video with your friends thank you